So the question I want to ask you, just imagine they could be <laughs> contextual, contextual voicemails. So this is one, uh, one of the things we wanted to, uh, uh, to show as, a, as an example of a description of uh, existing behaviors <coughs> that people stopped. But actually, that APIs are completely re-enabling, so Carol is here to talk about that. So Carol? Thank you. Yeah, the stage is yours, and please have a warm welcome for Carol. Thank you very much. So thank you, everybody. Yes, yeah, sorry, so uh, you, you won't get to hear about Outspot today. Uh, but uh, Luis is around. I'm sure you, you can catch up with him directly. Um, so yeah, today I, I wanted to talk about voicemail. You know, is that something that's really uh, totally outdated? You know, for some of us, we remember the old uh, cassette player, uh, tape players. Uh, you know, if you look at how it works right now, it's not really different. It's the user experience has been changed in terms of how do you interact with the voicemail, but the features are not more than what you used to get with those tape recorder. Uh, and some people found that very frustrating. So I have a little video for you there. You don't have to make a robot voice come on and tell people what to do after the beep. After my custom voicemail message tells them what to do after the beep. I don't need a robot to be like, mm, I don't believe he got the message across. People know what to do after the beep. There's sometimes that I call somebody and it doesn't even have a message. It just goes boop. But somehow I can figure out what to do after that beep. Anyway, hey John, uh, oh my god, how do I get that straight to beep voicemail you have? Call me back immediately. I forget what I was calling you about, but now that's the only thing I care about. Thank you. One beep explanation. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to leave this message, and I'm going to forget it if I keep having stuff sidetracking me. I'm going to forget what I was going to even say in the first place. She starts listening up these options I've never used before to leave a callback number. Press 5. Who presses five? Do you have any press five statistics? Instead of pressing five, can't you just leave the callback number with the voice you're leaving the voicemail with? The one you're using? That's what the robot should say. To leave a callback number, say it, idiot. Say the number! And then there's the, when you're finished leaving the message, please hang up. What? Well, what do I do now, robot? After I hang up, did what? Maybe put your phone back in your pocket. Oh, that's bro, well, thank you, good cheese, robot. I wish you could just narrate my life. Eat food sometimes, and don't forget to breathe oxygen. Oh my god, thank you for helping that! When I hear the robot start talking, I ask myself, is what I was gonna say in the voicemail worth me waiting for the robot? Probably not, because then I can just hang up and send him a text message. It's not like you have to text message a text bot before you text somebody, and the text bot texts you back, and it's like, to text someone, send them a text. Oh, thank you, text bot! If you work at a phone company, can you go talk to the department in charge of voicemail robots and just reposition them so that their department focuses on something like, I don't know, having a signal? My custom greeting used to be funny. It used to be one phone call, no answer. Toby Turner is not available. So Toby Turner is a comic in the US and he made this video that was very funny. but. Actually, the issue he's pointing to is the user experience. And why is the user experience broken from our perspective? Is it because the voicemail actually was not made to, to, uh, to solve a user problem. It was made to solve a telco problem. You know, why did they create the voicemail originally? It was because at that time, you know, we could, uh, telco could make a lot of money through the call termination. So as long as you were talking, they were making money. And so they needed the voicemail, so you spend more time calling, and also to create people uh, calling back and create more calls. Uh, so that was a business model that worked until recently, but now with the call termination being really small, there is actually no more uh, business case for the telcos. So what does that mean for them? It means that suddenly you have all those voicemail apps that they don't work on anymore because it's uh, you know, something they don't make money out of. And you see on the, uh, on the stores that they have very bad uh, ratings around three and even twos for some of them. So uh, at Voxis, we have an app, which is a voicemail, and we get great ratings. So what are we doing differently? <coughs> so what we are trying to solve is not a telco problem. It's actually a user problem. So the user problem is why do they need voicemail is twice, so the, the two prompts. So one thing is you are getting a lot of calls, and you're not available, and so people leave you a voicemail. So you need to be greeting the people in a nice way. You know, when you call someone and you have the typical uh, greetings like, you have reached uh, 04, blah, 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 or something like that, it's not nice. You know, I don't communicate with my wife the same way that I communicate with my boss, or you know, each person I have a different way of interacting, so why do they all get the sort of message, which is boring? Uh, on the other hand, uh, you know, when they leave me a voicemail, usually it means that I was not available to take a call, and so I'm 
probably not a situation also where I can listen to a voicemail. So they don't get the message across. And so that's a, a big problem for a lot of uh, mobile users. And you could think, you know, you, you could resolve that with call center. That works for the big businesses. But you know, for individuals, SMBs, it's still not a solution. And so that's what we're trying to do with Voxis, is to create a vocal assistant that can act as your voicemail and that can actually you know, interface with the callers in a way that, which is meaningful to them as a caller and that uh, bring you value as the callee. So what we've done is we've created a, an app which allow you to do a couple of things. So first thing is we allow you to personalize the greetings based on the caller. So you no longer have the same voicemail for your, your, your wife and your banker. So my wife, when she calls, she has something to say, oh, sweetie, I'm so sorry, I'm still busy in a meeting. And it's my own voice. When it's my banker calling me, he actually gets a voicemail, which is uh, personalized to him, but it's actually not even my voice. So I can write the greetings, and I can use keywords like you know, first name, last name, and I can now industrialize the personalization of the greeting. So I don't have to actually record you know, hundreds of, voice, of greetings for each of single of my contacts. I do that for like, the person that are the closest to me, and then I can create something where I write the greeting, and I can put keywords like you know, first name, and when that person calls, he will get something that's really personal to him. Um, but that is more, uh, let's say, uh, less emotional <laughs> than if it was with my own voice. Now, on the other hand, as the recipient of that voicemail, the issue I was talking about is, you know, I can't listen to all those voicemails. And you, you have people that receive a lot of voicemail every day uh, in, in certain areas. Uh, so what we've tried to do is to, you know, build up on the visual voicemail contact uh, by merging the idea of being able to listen to your voicemail, but also read your voicemail. And so it's much easier, uh, you know, we, um, we read twice as fast as we can uh, listen. Uh, so in, in the blink of an eye, I can see which one are the important one. I can uh, look at those one. I can even listen to those if really they are important. I, I want to have all the, the, the details of the message. But then all the other, I can very simply uh, swipe and uh, get rid of. Uh, and the other thing we, that we provide with uh, the uh, personalized greeting is the uh, sharing. Uh, so for some of our users, it's great when they are not available, they want somebody else to receive the voicemail, uh, so they can, each, they can uh, react on that voicemail, and we'll get to that point a little more later on. So that brings us to uh, you know, much better user experience. So we have users that are very happy because they don't have to listen to voicemail, they don't have to, they can uh, see their uh, spammy uh, calls uh, very easily. Uh, you have also people that are telling us, you know, the difference is not only the voicemail itself; it's also the service. So, what's important for us is, you know, we consider our customer as the the user, and we want them to have a great experience not only in the app but also outside of the app. So, uh, you know, the service, uh, the support service, are also important. Um, yeah, so plenty of love. We just launched in the U.S., and so we are quite happy with all the. The, 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 the reviews we are getting um, right now. Uh, but so if you look at voicemail, uh, you can see it also as a productivity tool in certain areas. So by example, a lot of our users are uh, sales um, people, sales teams. And uh, so earlier I was saying you know, when you receive a lot of, uh, of uh, messages, uh, it's very hard to, to treat all of them. So by example, uh, I have a company uh, who have um, uh, sales team where they receive between you know, 20 to 40 voicemail a day. Uh, and the, the reason why is that because they are driving, uh, and now in France at least, and I think it's more and more the case in many other countries, they are not allowed to make calls while they are driving, and when they are not driving, well, they are with the customer having a meeting. So now they are getting older calls, and they don't have time to listen to all those voicemails. Some of them are very long, uh, not interesting on top of that, so how, how, do, they, um, how do they handle those uh, calls? So with the voice uh, to text, they can actually read the voicemail and know immediately, okay, that client wants, you know, read the version of the product, uh, and they know the information when they go and see the client. When previously they will arrive, the client will say, hey, I left you a voicemail. Ah, right, sorry, I didn't get the information. So that will create friction. So they are very uh, happy to, to use uh, Voxis like that. Uh, another way of uh, seeing uh, how the voicemail can change 
uh, the, the way people behave is actually we are talking with a couple of uh, large corporations in France and uh, the issue they are having is that actually you know, the usage of phone, as I previously mentioned, in the cars is really dangerous. A lot of people are uh, having accidents. So they are now forbid the usage of the phone. But on the other hand, you know, they still have the pressure. You know, clients are calling, uh, you know, colleagues are calling, and you are not, uh, no time to take those calls. So uh, even if you're not authorized, you end up doing it, and it creates uh, risks for that. So now knowing that you don't have to listen to the call, but you will get a voicemail, and that voicemail, you'll be able to read it, or you could be able to share it with your, uh, uh, um, with your team automatically, then you, you don't have that pressure anymore, and you can use actually the voicemail now as a tool to make people having a better um, experience and a safer experience driving while uh, getting calls. But so this is just the beginning. And wh what I said at the be uh, earlier is that you know, we really want to go even one step further. And so I have a little second video to watch. Carol, you've reached ABC Windows. How can we help you? Hi, I'm having an issue with a broken window which needs to be fixed right away. Is it the tilt and turn window we serviced back in December of 2014? Yes, it is. Uh, it's cracked and I'm nervous it's going to shut us soon. Let's set up an appointment to solve that problem. Are you available Monday, June 7th <coughs> between 12 and 4 p.m.? No, but I'm available Tuesday or Wednesday of that week. Okay, scheduling for Tuesday, June 7th, between 12 and 4 p.m. Please confirm that this works. Yes, that's good. Are you still at 104 Darlington Avenue? Yes, that's correct. And uh, how much do you charge? We'll charge $75 for the initial visit, and we'll follow up with you once we have assessed any parts for labor. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Is your number still 212-555-0101? Yes. We'll send you an SMS to confirm your appointment. <coughs> Thanks for calling ABC Window and have a great day. Thank you. So, this one is an example uh, for a window repair shop, but the, the idea is uh, something that we are building uh, right now for a restaurant, by example. So kind of like the duplex, the mirror of duplex, for, for those who know Google duplex. So the idea is that for those businesses that are receiving calls, uh, you know, they uh, often have calls that end up on the voicemail, and you know, it's, it's often uh, customer uh, that they, will, they might lose because the customer doesn't want to leave a voicemail, or they will leave a voicemail, but by the time they get the information, it will be too late to react to the customer interaction. So what we are working on is that uh, you can merge uh, call bot, as we call it, and uh, the voicemail into one experience where somebody calls, and for some use case, because, you know, the uh, AI technology is not able to reply to anything. Uh, we're not there yet, but for some use case, then you can go through the call bot where you interact with the, uh, uh, with the bot to, make a, to get a specific information, so reservation, uh, uh, order uh, information, etc. And if your, uh, if your uh, request is not part of what the bot is capable, then you just leave a voicemail and we go back to what you've seen previously. Uh, so we are working on different you know, B2B um, use case like that, and it's uh, very uh, good for them because uh, a lot of businesses actually, I think, in the SMB's uh, market, uh, around 60% of calls actually never end up getting someone on the other line. So either it doesn't answer at all or you get to a voicemail. So we launched in France uh, last year, we just launched in the US. Uh, we're quite happy with the, the growth we're seeing in the US uh, over the last few months. And uh, you know, one thing that we've done in terms of go-to-market is uh, that we are working with uh, different uh, partners uh, that have a, a marketplace. So you, know, you might have met or hear about Telestax, VoIP Innovation here. In France, we are working with a company called Vivoca. Uh, and so we also uh, you know, leverage this API ecosystem not only to build our service, um, because so the the Voxist uh, service uh, rely a lot on uh, APIs from some of those providers, but also to expose our own service uh, to uh, their customer base uh, through their uh, showroom marketplace, etc. So that's uh, why we, we've been uh, very uh, happy to be here and meet with a lot of our uh, partners. And uh, I'd be happy to tell you more about uh, the Voxist experience working with those if you are interested. And that's it. Thank you. Any 
Thank you. Um, I have two questions, in fact, sure. one commercial, one technological. I'll start with the technological first. Um, what is your uh, accuracy rate in terms of recognizing the, the voice and, uh, or the speech in terms of natural language understanding? So, so there is two use cases there. So mm -hmm. for the voicemail part, um, it's not that great. Uh, I would say it's around you know, 75, 80. Uh, but that's why we don't do anything on top of the voicemail. We just you know, send you the, the, uh, the transcription. And you as a human, knowing the background of the conversation, the context of that conversation, you kind of fill the blank to know, OK, yeah, I, I, I see what he's talking about. When an AI would not be able to do that because we don't have enough background on each conversation. On, on the call boat, uh, you know, it's pretty accurate. So the, uh, in this case, we, we, we restrict the language uh, model to something very simple like you know, uh, making an appointment, getting an order. So we can't do everything, as I said. If not, then we, we, we have to move back to the uh, uh, taking a message part. Uh, but then for interaction like that, which are very uh, limited, it's, uh, I don't have the numbers, but it's, it works very well. And the second question is commercial, um, because you need to scale up if you're going to serve, for example, 1,000 simultaneous calls, etc. cetera. Um, how do you, um, how do you I, would say, I would say, the TCO management, um, if you have to go from 1,000 to 10,000 simultaneous calls, the, is it linear? Is it more, or I mean, how many CPU cycles, so to speak, uh, or storage, etc., that you would need to uh, to realize this in your business? So, so from from a pure telecom part, uh, we, we are uh, some of our partner here that we mentioned earlier. They are doing millions of calls, so it's it's pretty much not a, an issue. We don't really have an issue to to take the calls. Now, for for the uh, AI interaction. Um, for now, it's a little too early for me to, to tell. Uh, we don't have enough volumes that I can tell if, the, if we might have issues in, in uh, scaling. But for the time being, it, it scales well. Uh, we, we are basing most of our infrastructure on um, uh, serverless uh, technologies. So we, we create the, the resources as much as soon as the requests are coming in. One more question? Yeah. Do you have a version of this for the enterprise world? Sorry? Do you have a version of this? Of the, <coughs> if this Sorry. is working for the enterprise, large enterprises? Yeah. I mean, yeah. you mentioned so, so. that it's a mobile app. Mm. If the enterprises want to have a mobile app, but the, by somehow a different way to kind of interact with the, the voicemail system, or mm. you, know, so, you so might the, be receiving the email <coughs> instead of you know going through the voicemail mm. on your app, that sort of, I mean, do you have that kind of uh, flexibility in the way maybe the user want to consume the product that you have? Yeah, so for, for now, the, the, the interface is really the mobile app. Uh, we do have enterprise customer, uh, and so the, the difference here is just in terms of provisioning, let's say, so they don't have to create their own account. We receive uh, through API the account creation uh, from the, the company. Uh, but they still use the, the mobile app. Uh, what we are working on, so currently the connection, uh, when we want to share voicemail, by example, with a colleague is through email, uh, but we, we might build the connectors uh, specific to Slack, SAP, uh, Salesforce, or whatever, uh, depending on the, the, the needs of our customer. Right now, we, we haven't had to build that, so we just do through uh, email. I don't know if it's an answer your, your question. I mean, I, I was thinking you were giving an example of the salespeople. I, I work for a bank, and mm. you know, we do have a lot of traders, salespeople, mm. that I'm sure they're facing a similar example mm. you gave to, you know, with the, with the restaurant owner, you know, receiving for, so, you know, there's those kind of engagement happening for all different types of businesses, but just for the nature of the business that I'm in, I'm thinking a, a different, uh, a, a tailored version of it, I guess, would be more suitable, but the, the capability that you're talking mm. about, the underlying capability, is significantly valuable, because, Traditional voicemail is kind of pushed on the side of everyone. No, yeah, it's, it's a black hole. But exactly, <laughs> but when you put it this way, it, it creates a lot of value for the business. So mm. just thinking that rather than having, you know, reliant on the, maybe the mobile networks that you launch your mobile mm. app, rather than purely focusing on the consumer market, if you were trying so, to so that to yeah. large organizations, yeah. and now I'll give it, I work for JP Morgan, mm. they're a very large organization. So in order to make it suitable for a company like that in a different industry, it will probably require some, some work, but have you kind of thought through that? That's, that's what I'm yeah. So, so we're thinking about it, uh, but we did not yet have uh, any uh, 
any engagement where we had to actually uh, do that kind of integration. So what we did with uh, VoIP innovation for the US is actually so the, the phone number that are connected to the app uh, are not uh, only mobile number, but are VoIP innovation number that you buy through VoIP innovation. And when you buy it through VoIP innovation, you, you say you want the Vox's voicemail on it, and, and then it's connected. So it's not a... It's not a mobile number, so the, the, the app works with you know, fixed mobile VoIP numbers. You, you don't have to, it's not only mobile. But the user interface for now it is more targeting like one-to-one -one interaction is through a mobile app because that's what we think is the most relevant to, to the type of people that are you know, always busy and not able to receive calls. We think that on the desk, uh, you know, the, there are more and more companies where they don't, they don't even have a desk phone anymore. It's just a VoIP uh, within a, an app. Uh, and so that's a different uh, use case. 